Hi, I'm Arno Kandel. I'm the CTO of H2O AI, and today we're going to build generalized linear machine learning models on a GPU, actually on eight GPUs on a DGX1, a little supercomputer in a box with about 100 teraflops of performance. The data set is 50,000 rows and 10,000 columns. It's all numbers. It's the census data set. So for every person in the data set, which represents a row, there's about 10,000 features, so numbers that predict um, certain outcomes. In this case, we're going to predict the income earned by each person. So this is a regression problem. This is a Jupyter notebook, so we can import certain packages that we need. Um, mostly it's just support libraries, but this one is the one that we're really showing here. This is the H2OAI GLM edition for GPUs. We're running this on an 8 GPU box. We're importing the data set. We conveniently prepared that as a feather data set so it's binary and can be sucked into the environment here quickly. We're looking at the last column as the target and that's the income earned and the distribution, as you can see, is a uh, poisson. So basically there's not so many rich people, but mostly people making less than $100,000. And the uh, mean and standard deviation are somewhere in the 30,000 range. So now we're going to look at uh, a small little split here. So first we look at the data set itself, but as you know, in, in machine learning, you have to split the data set first into um, a training set and the validation set, so you can judge the model performance at the end on this validation set. So we have 55,000 rows and 9,700 columns. We are taking 20% away for holdout, so we can score the model later. And all this is doing is just uh, copying it, and then it adds a, um, a little column of ones at the end. Uh, that's for intercept that's a, a specific feature for this model that you have a constant prediction for every single person in the data set. You start with this value and then you add some extra terms based on the other 9,700 features. So basically we have 44,000 rows for training, 11,000 for validation. Here we define a bunch of methods that can help us with plotting the results and with running the animation later that you'll see. But the most important part is somewhere where it runs the actual solver here. And that's our elastic net solver that does a whole regularization path and cross validation and has um, different alphas, which is the balance between L1 and L2 penalty. So now I'm starting the solver. And as you can see, it ingested the data set, put it into the GPUs, and now it's solving. And in the meantime, while it's running, we can look at the uh, outcome. So here you see that there's a CPU utilization and GPU utilization and the GPUs are already all busy. All eight GPUs are running and they're filling up the space of alpha and lambda. So alpha says how much of L1 versus L2 penalty you have. So one means it's all L1 penalty and zero means it's all L2 penalty, also known as rich regression and uh, lasso. And lambda itself is the regularization strength. So at this end here, you're saying that the model should basically be a constant, at which point it predicts badly. That's the prediction as if you predicted the same value for everybody that gives you a zero, which is um, bad accuracy. And one means it's the best possible accuracy you can get out of this GLM model, which is only obtained in one point in this whole map here. And that point we're about to find. And as you can see, Less regularization here means more parameters are allowed to live in the model. So that could be like 5,000 or 6,000 predictors used to make a prediction. And it seems that including more than just a few predictors in the model is a good idea. So the best models are the ones that are on the left side here. But here, when you have lasso, which is only L1 penalty, you actually get a very good model early on, which means you don't need too many coefficients in the model. Um, and still you get a really good model. This basically picks the best predictors for you. And you can see that we just built 4,000 models in about a minute and a half on a 8 GPU box, and that was a pretty powerful demo.
Uh, this would have taken about an hour or so on a single uh, server that consists of two Xeon uh, chips. So having GPUs for machine learning is a very powerful thing and it helps us to build models faster and to do more with the time that we have. Thanks so much for your interest and um, you can follow this example online at github.com. Um, H2AI and then perf. In here, there's going to be a, a notebook here and the results of it as well. So this is what we just saw. It was the 100 seconds roughly for the 8 GPU example. And if you ran the same thing on a, on a dual Xeon box, it would have taken an hour. And you're welcome to follow these instructions to run your um, own experiments everything is here from the data set all the way to the uh, source code that is needed to run this example and the uh, package that you need to install to run this uh, solver so thanks for your attention and uh, see you soon